All right, the second video of the third week, uh, sorry for the incoming call in the previous video. I had uh, some problem with my MacBooks. I called a, a service center, and this was a call from the, uh, the center uh, for the arrangement of appointment. Anyhow, I'm sorry about that. So I couldn't finish the last topic of chapter four. So in this video, I'm going, I'm going to finish that. Indeed, uh, so that is an inverse, okay? So the, uh, the last operation uh, in basic elementary matrix algebra, so the inverse of a square matrix A uh, denoted by A to the power negative one, so that is called the inverse of A, is defined by the condition uh, A times A to the power negative one, so A is inverse, or A is inverse times A, Okay, so regardless of order of multiplication, we get we get the uh, identity matrix. All right, so the inverse uh, can be thought of as a reciprocal or division in scalar algebra, right? Because we know for every constant c, non-zero constant c, uh, multiplication with its reciprocal gives a, a one. Okay. So the inverse matrix can be thought of as a reciprocal or uh, the division. Okay. All right, and there are six properties. So we are going to prove, you know, six statements uh, in this video. So that might be a little bit boring, but once again, it helps you uh, to strengthen the uh, algebraic skill. Okay. That is the main objective of chapter four. And in chapter five, now we are going to analyze a system of linear equations. Uh, all right. So the chapter four uh, can be regarded as a preliminary step for the analysis of linear equation system in chapter five. All right. So it's a little bit boring, but the uh, bear with me. Uh, we are going to do some interesting examples in the end. All right. And the first property of the inverse is, you know, uh, not every square matrix has an inverse, okay? So some square matrix has an inverse, but the, some other matrices do not have an inverse. So in such a case, we say that matrix is non-invertible or equivalently singular if, uh, so there is no matrix B, there is no matrix B satisfying the product with A regardless of order, order of multiplication, uh, so yields the identity matrix. Okay? If there is a no matrix B satisfying this relation, uh, so the product gives us the identity matrix, then we say matrix A is non-invertible or singular. Okay, so let me first highlight uh, not every square matrix has an inverse. Okay, so we are going to study, uh, so we are going to study several conditions under which square matrix has an inverse or it does not have an inverse. Okay. That is quite important for solving a uh, linear equation system. Right? And the second property of inverse is the inverse of A is inverse. So we take a, a double inverses, then we get back the uh, original matrix A. Uh, why this is true? Because uh, think about the definition of the uh, inverse matrix. So the inverse of A inverse, by definition, if we multiply, uh, this guy by A inverse, we should get identity matrix, right? That is the definition of the inverse function. So, oh, there's an inverse matrix. Uh, so if we put in A inverse for uh, A, then we are going to get this, right? And now let me multiply both sides by, so post multiply, Post multiply by A, okay? Then the right side, 
identity times a gives us a. And the left side, we post multiply by matrix a. So the, now we apply the associated law. So it does not matter which pair we take the first. So a inverse a becomes i. Okay? And we can delete that uh, by the property of identity matrix. So we are left with a inverse and another inverse, right? So the uh, double inverses gives us the original matrix. Okay? So we can prove this statement in this way. And the third property is, if an inverse matrix exists, then it is unique. Okay, so the inverse matrix is uniquely determined by the original matrix A. If we have a one matrix A, then its inverse is uniquely determined. Okay, it may not exist, but if it exists, it is uniquely determined. There is only one inverse for each scale matrix. Why that is true? Okay, so how do we, uh, how they prove, how they prove this statement? And suppose there is another matrix B, another matrix B satisfy A times B and B times A equals I. And B is another matrix, so different from A inverse. Okay? And we're going to prove that, in fact, these are equal to each other, all right? B is just the A inverse. That establishes, uh, that establishes uh, the uniqueness of the inverse, uh, inverse matrix, all right? And how do you prove this? Uh, think about a uh, B, okay? And let me multiply by I, okay? Post multiply, and that's the same, and they, uh, Oh, so, okay, just a second. Oh, let me start with, sorry. Yeah, let me start with a, a matrix A inverse, okay. Um, so start with A inverse, okay. And it does not change even if we multiply our uh, identity matrix. And we define matrix B as a uh, uh, A B equals I, satisfying A times B are uh, equal to I. So we can substitute A B here, because A B is a identity matrix, all right? And now applying the associated law, so we first take these two matrices, and A inverse A, times b, but by definition of inverse, a inverse times a is a identity matrix, so i, b, and we can delete identity matrix in multiplication, so it gives us a, a matrix b, okay? So a inverse, okay? Oh, sorry, if we have another matrix b, it should be equal to a inverse, okay? So a inverse is unique. All right, and the fourth property of the inverse is a uh, uh, in definition of the inverse matrix. It seems like we have two conditions, so we impose a uh, two different conditions. A A inverse should be equal to I plus A inverse A is equal to I, All right? But in fact, either condition is enough uh, to establish the inverse relationship A and A inverse, okay? Why that is true? So uh, we have to show if this is true, so that implies A inverse A is equal to I, okay? Or the other way around, if this is true, then the other condition is redundant, okay? So, Similarly, we impose uh, two different conditions. In fact, uh, we impose just uh, one single condition. Okay, that is enough for uh, inverse relationship. Right. How to prove this? 
Uh, so now take a uh, this one. We are going to, so now we want to show A inverse A is equal to I. So what is A inverse A? Okay. Uh, we can say this is the same as uh, ident identity matrix. So a, uh, you know, multiplication of identity matrix does not change the outcome. So we can, we can post multiply by identity matrix. All right. But we know that A, A inverse is equal to I. And furthermore, A inverse times A inverse and its inverse, so double inverses, is equal to I, right? So now I'm going to plug in uh, the second expression for I here to get A inverse A and A inverse times A inverse is inverse, okay? Then what can I do that? So what can I do uh, in this expression? Uh, I can first apply the associative law, okay? To delete these two matrices. A times A inverse, we know this is identity matrix, right? So we have A inverse I and A inverse N is inverse, okay? And we can delete identity matrix uh, whenever we want. Right, so this is a inverse times a inverse, sorry, double inverse. Right, then that is just the identity matrix. Okay, so if we have a times a inverse equal to identity matrix, then the second condition is a immediate from the the first condition. So the uh, uh, actually one of these two conditions is necessary for the uh, inverse relationship. And the fifth property, sorry, uh, I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to show you six properties in the text to do. Uh, the fifth one is the most important one. So just like a transpose, if we take the inverse on the product, okay, and we can distribute the inverse, and at the same time, we have to reverse the order of the product. So the uh, inverse of the product is going to be b to the uh, b to the uh, b's inverse times a's inverse. Okay, we have to reverse the order of the product. Right? Why that is true? Uh, so by definition of the inverse, we know the inverse of a b times a b is just the identity matrix, right? And then we post multiply by B's inverse. Okay. Then the right side becomes B's inverse. And by the associative law, we can take this pair first to make the identity matrix. Okay. And that is just the one. So we can delete that. So the left side becomes uh, AB inverse times A. Okay. Now we next post multiply by A inverse. Okay. And the right side becomes B's inverse times A's inverse. And then A and A inverse are canceled out. Okay. So we get AB's inverse is the uh, B's inverse times A, uh, A's inverse. Okay. And the finally last property is a if we take the transpose and inverse, uh, we can switch them, right? So the inverse of A's, A's transpose is the same as A inverse's transpose, okay? Uh, why this is true? Uh, so by definition of the inverse, we know A, A inverse is an identity matrix. Right, and now I'm gonna take transpose here. Take transpose, okay? Then I is a identity matrix is a symmetric. So taking transpose does not change. 
So I transpose is the same as I. What is the left hand side? The expression on the left hand side. We know uh, after taking transpose, we have to reverse the order, right? So this is going to be A inverses transpose times A transpose, right? Uh, by the last property of the transpose. Uh, so now let me multiply, let me pause to multiply. Pause to multiply by uh, A transposes inverse, okay? Then this AT will be canceled off, right? And the right side becomes AT inverse, and the left hand side is A inverse transpose, okay? So we can switch in transpose and inverse whenever we want, right? That is the last property. All right, so six properties of inverse, uh, inverse matrix, okay? And I want to highlight the uh, last two properties, uh, this one and this one. Uh, that will be used frequently uh, in Chapter 5. All right. So this is a preview of the next chapter. So what we are going to study in Chapter 5 so in chapter four, uh, we studied how to put a system of linear equations into a matrix equation. So here we are given a, a, uh, two uh, simultaneous linear equations, and now we know how to express that into a matrix form. So one coefficient matrix, and one constant matrix, and one variable matrix. So into the firm a x a times x equals b. All right. Now we know the inverse matrix. So pre-multiplying both sides by a's inverse, if that inverse matrix exists, that it gives us a inverse times a x equals a inverse times b. Okay. And by definition of inverse matrix. Uh, these two is going to be ident matrix. So we are going to get x is a inverse times b. All right. So we can find a, a solution to linear system, linear equation system using matrix algebra. Okay. So here the important condition is the inverse matrix uh, has to exist. Otherwise, we can do this job. Because a inverse, if a inverse does not exist, we can simplify, uh, so we can solve this matrix equation uh, for x. All right? So the, there are two remaining questions. First, when matrix A has an inverse matrix. Second, how to compute the inverse matrix. If that exists, how to compute the inverse matrix. That is going to be uh, two major topics in chapter 5. All right? And let me stop the uh, video of the sec uh, the second video here, and hope you guys uh, enjoy that. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them uh, in the board of the course website. All right? Thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next videos.